Hello! Well, I go away for a few days on holiday and lo and behold new aircraft arrive in Flight Simulator which I'm not going to complain about at all because it's always great to have something new to fly. So we are looking at the Beechcraft V35 in Microsoft Flight Simulator and this has been released by Carinado who obviously sell their aircraft through the Marketplace store. It was only about £12, so that's about $15, $16. Um, and it looks rather remarkably lovely. I've not actually flown it properly yet, so this is going to be a first look at it for me as well. So I'm going to go and jump inside the aeroplane and have a look around. So we can put the yoke back on. I've just had a quick look around the cockpit to kind of figure out where things are and had a look at the procedures. You can see it's remarkably well modelled. So it kind of almost looks photographic. It's quite scary actually how just how good it does look. So let's get it started up. We are at Booker Airfield where I normally fly from and we'll do a simple circuit. We've got nice weather today. It's late in the afternoon or in early evening I should say. So we'll remove the yoke to have a look around. So battery on and strobe beacon and nav lights. Actually we shouldn't have the strobe on until we're in the air really. Uh, cal flap should be open. If we have a look outside we can see the cal flaps here around the outside of the engine. And there's a lighter socket. How bizarre is that? You don't see things like that in the modern world much anymore, do you? There's a rudder trim here, which is quite useful, so you can see the level of trim you have preset. Obviously, as you roll it, you can see upward trim or downward trim and a number. We'll put it on zero for the moment, just to see how that works on takeoff. Um, we need to go and check the fuel lever, which is down to our side down here, so it's on the left main, which is good. We need to put the fuel mixture all the way into rich. The propeller RPM should also be on high. Now, having a read of the procedures, they prefer you to have this fuel pump on until the fuel pressure has come up once the engine is running and then you can turn it back off. So let's have a look and see how that works. So we've got a parking brake here. We'll just cycle it to make sure my controls agree with it. So parking brake is on. You can see obviously the pedals were being um, animated there nicely, which is very cool. Oh, we can turn on the avionics power, but we shouldn't do that until the engine is running. So let's go and turn the engine over and see how that goes. So both magnetos are on. Okay, I just need to check the volume levels here. So to make sure you can hear me over the aircraft and you can now which is good. Okay so we have a, a your damper switch down here. I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure if it will light up or show anywhere that it's actually doing anything so we'll figure that out in a moment. So now we have the engine running. Oh we didn't actually turn the auxiliary fuel pump on which we should have done. Let's see if that makes any difference to this then. So if we look here, we've got the fuel there, instrument air, flat position. We've got the fuel flow here as a digital readout. So let's go and turn that engine back off again. So obviously fuel flow has dropped to zero. So the startup instructions, this just shows really that this isn't maybe as realistic as it should be. We can put the fuel pump switch on and we start the engine and we wait for this to stabilise, which it has done, and then we can turn this off. But I don't think it's really simulated well enough for that to make any difference. As you saw, I was able to start the engine without it anyway. OK, once you have the engine up and running, you can switch the alternator switch on. So we're generating electricity now from the engine, not just from the battery. Then we can turn on the avionics master power switch wait for things to set themselves up and that all looks good. Notice you've got a little GPS switch up here which will flick you on your CDI mode over here. So you've got uh, an HSI here instead of just the uh, independent instruments which is quite cool. You've got Nav2 over there and you've got quite a lot of instruments actually. It's quite impressive. Down here we've got the autopilot. I noticed there's actually a breakout for the autopilot over here so you can arm your altitude separately than 
and dialing it in over here as you would normally. You know, so it's a slightly different model of autopilot from Bendix than you sometimes see in the aircraft in flight simulator. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So you will notice over here that this has a this will be nav 1 I imagine and that will be nav 2 so yes it's, the tooltips are saying that's the nav 2 frequency ok so we don't need to worry about that ok let's just have a look around outside and waggle some of the controls around so we'll try the elevator the aileron sorry so that works fine and we've got the elevators and Rudder obviously is combined with the elevators on the V35 and nose wheel steering isn't going to happen until we're moving. Okay, let's take it for a circuit, shall we? So the one thing we do need to remind ourselves about once we take off is to close the cowl flaps. So that's the the, the um, plunger with the white surround on it. OK, so we'll go for take off flaps. So you can see there's a flap lever there that has up, approach and down. So we are going to leave the trim on zero. We'll centre the view up and we'll taxi out. Let's try sitting up as well. So pressing space, we get a pretty good view over the nose. And we can still see the six pack of the main instruments. I'm just revving up while we're still on the parking brakes to see how the needles react. It won't creep on the parking brake, I thought it might. OK, you come off the parking brake, 50% throttle and we're starting to move. So it's very, very predictable and, dare I say it, easy to navigate on the ground with it. But obviously it's a tricycle landing gear, so it should be really. It doesn't bounce around too much. It's not as stuttery as some of the um, some of the other just flight aircraft that you can get. So again, unless people own these aircraft and unless they have um, exact replica controls that are tuned to exactly the same throws. It's very difficult to say if anything's realistic in Flight Simulator. Okay, so now we're on the runway. We can go and turn that strobe light on. We'll also turn the pitot heat on while we're here. And let's go for it. So, full throttle. Holding quite a lot of right rudder to hold the runway centre line. Maybe crosswind. I didn't really look at the wind before we took off. It didn't seem to be too strong. So we'll rotate and we're up. Coming through 80 knots. So gear up. So we'll climb out to about 1500 feet or so. so if we have a look around visibility is very very good let's return the uh, the yoke back on, oh now we're in the air actually we could go and close those cowl flaps there we go so we're just holding about 240 degrees or so on the climb out coming up to 1500 feet Cut to 50% throttle and let's do a nice smooth turn back to 60 degrees to fly the reciprocal of the runway. So you can see there's the airfield just behind us over here. 
the flaps up now. So we're in no hurry to do anything clever or spectacular. We're just having a fly to see how it behaves really. I guess we could push the throttle out. Now we're coming towards 60 degrees. It's 90. So let's push it for maximum throttle. See how fast it goes in a straight line, just as we're flying this downwind leg. Because obviously we're going to go and play with stalling in a moment, but we'll climb into it and give ourselves some room. So it's coming up towards 150 knots in level flight. 160 knots, so I think it would actually accelerate straight through its, its speed limit. Unless we do something about it, so max power is impressive. So let's pull up. There's a klaxon if we go below a given amount of throttle. So I'm just going to go in straight line and more back stick, more and more back stick. We're coming through 60 knots. There's the stall warning. More and more back stick. And it went down in a dead straight line. It accelerated very, very hard once we let go of the pressure on the back stick. Okay. Let's try that going around a corner and see if it will drop a wing. So we'll climb again. This is with power. and it tucked the wing underneath, but it's still extremely stable. Okay, how about landing? So we'll turn across the runway. And slow down. Gear down. Flaps down, so we're going to come in quite steep, just to see how it behaves really. So, so far it's actually great fun and remarkably compliant, I think the word would be. So we're coming in 80 knots with full flaps, gear down, so we're kind of dirty. I guess you could call it. I guess we should open the cow flaps again. It does seem very heavy and draggy descending like this. So I'm coming back towards 50% throttle and it's still losing speed and altitude, quite alarmingly. So, cut the throttle, flare it out, we're on the limit of the stall warning, and we're down. The sounds are actually quite good, aren't they? So, flaps back up. And that was actually remarkably unremarkable, wasn't it, in a strange sort of way. So, now we're back down on the ground, we can turn the strobe light back off, and we'll go and taxi out across the grass, see if we get any special sounds for the grass as well. And we do. That's very cool.
taxi back in and have a look at the plane while we're taxiing. As you can see, it actually looks really nice. It's really, really nicely modelled. So just take it back in and park it up. So I am really impressed with this. This is the the Beach V35 in Microsoft Flight Simulator and I may well be using it on some group flights very soon. So we're just going to take it back in and park up then we can have a nice look around it with the drone cam on the outside. As we shortcut across the grass. There doesn't seem to be any other traffic operating here today so I don't think we'll get told off. Having said that, there is a helicopter on the stand over here. In between the cones. So let's see what the turning circle is like as well on the ground. It seems to be remarkably sharp actually. Yeah, you can almost turn in its own length. Parking brakes on. Cut the fuel mixture. And avionics off. And alternator off. Lights off. Battery off. Key off. And we're back cold and dark and the door opens. It's kind of one of the nice things that Caronado tend to do. So I don't think the flight model is the most realistic thing in the world. It's not up there with anything like the uh, the Globe Swift or the Simworks Studios Kodiak, uh, which seems to be the re reference that most people point to for a really good flight model. But it's good fun to fly around. Oh, things like the window open, of course. And it does affect the sound you hear. Um, but yeah, the dials work and it seems to operate really nicely so yeah I think I'm trying not to be too hard on it because it's good fun and it looks great and it's easy to fly and it's very very inexpensive so there we go that's the Beechcraft V35 I'm quite late to the party with this one I think while I was away lots of other people have already gone and bought it so if you were wondering about it or you wondered what I, was, I thought of it now you know so I'll probably be flying it around over the next few weeks Okay, I will see you soon.